traditional stages in developing a system. Implementation. So we are going to take a look at the implementation stage of the traditional approach to system development. And as we can see here, it's the second last stage of the actual approach. So we're getting towards the end of it now. So let's see what implementation involves. So at this stage of system development, an implementation plan is developed outlining how the existing system will be transitioned into the new system. So we've got to get it within the organization and we've got to remove the existing system that they've been using and put in our new system that we've been developing. The acquisition of information technology also takes place at this time in which the hardware and software required to build the new system is obtained and installed within the organization okay so we've got to get all this new technology in to the organization so that the system can be set up so this stuff takes time once the system is installed okay the participants of the system need to be trained in its use which will be assisted through the generation of an operations manual okay so we've got a few key things we've brought up there but we'll break down what this implementation plan in is involved with with really four key points the first one is the conversion method for replacing the existing system with a new system the second one is how data will be converted from the existing system so it is compatible with the new system so for example if you were going to be using an actual database in a new system yet all your data was stored in spreadsheet format for all your records you can't just merely cut all those actual spreadsheet records from the spreadsheet and put them into a database file no what you need to do is produce a csv file first so that's how you convert it over and that stands for comma separated values Okay, and it, it takes away the actual tabular format and instead separates everything that was in a column with commas. Okay, and so it's, it becomes a raw text file. And then that file you can then import into a database. So that's just an example how data can be converted when moving between spreadsheets and databases. Okay, and there's, this obviously is an issue with a whole variety of different softwares when changing software involved in an old system and a new system. Okay, so just keep that in mind. I'm not really going into much more on that there. Thirdly, is a strategy for the training of the users and participants. And essentially, how are they going to know how to use this new system? And then finally, the development of an operations manual that will assist the users and participants in using this new system. So we're going to go into a bit more detail on these on this next slide now. So let's have a look at them. Firstly, we are going to look at the conversion methods. Okay, and the first one is a direct conversion, where pretty much we get rid of the old system straight away and we bring in the new system and bang, that's it. We're using the new system and it's in. Okay, and it's an immediate turnover. Okay, it's the quickest and easiest one to do because pretty much you're using the new system straight away. Secondly is a parallel conversion where the old system and the new system are both being used by the organization at the same time. So if there's any issues with the new system, the old system's still there. But the downside of it is you're putting information and data into two parallel systems, which means twice the work. Thirdly is a phase conversion, which means that scheduled periods, part of the new system is implemented, replacing a section of the old information system. And this is done gradually until eventually the new system is fully installed and the old system is completely gone. But it gives the organization time to master the system part by part by bringing it in gradually. And obviously it takes a lot longer to install, but you get to master a part before you have to start learning the next part. So it comes with the advantages. And then finally is a pilot conversion. And in this pilot, pilot conversion, the new system is being trialed in full in one part of the organization. If the information system is deemed successful after this trial period, which may be three months, okay, it will then be implemented into all other areas of the organization. Okay, so if it's a department store such as Big W, they might have it that the actual kitchenware section is using this new system. Okay, but all other parts of it, okay, are using the old system. Or could even be based that Big W in Sydney is using the new system, but the Big W in Melbourne still using the old system. Okay, and then Sydney gives its data and says, you know what, this system is a success after the three months. And then Melbourne will adopt that new system as long as all other stores across the country. Okay, so that's a bit of an idea. It might be a department within an organization or if it's a multi-stored company like Big W, it might be one single store within the larger, larger organization using the new system. Okay, but essentially that's what it means. They pilot the, that actual new system and based on their findings is whether the rest will adopt it. And they usually do in this case. Moving on now, we'll go over training methods. Okay, and look, Examples of training for users and participants could include okay, one-to-one -one sessions between the trainer and a user and participant where they sit down and train a person face-to-face -face and go over the ins and outs of the new system. And then that person getting trained might go then and teach the rest of the staff how to use the new system. 
The alternative that is, is team training, where that same trainer might instead just train a whole group of people. Okay, and obviously this is a lot harder and you need to make sure that the group of people there, okay, are savvy in knowing what's going on because the trainer is only there for a limited time. Okay, so depending on the scenario, a one-to-one -one might be more effective if that person being trained, you know, is adequate and then training the other staff. But then if the team's pretty savvy at learning things within a, a limited amount of time, team training sessions might be the better way to go as well. But a big advantage is as well is online training in which it uses digital resources that contain information and video demonstrations in how to use the new system. So that way there's technically no training at all. There might just be information that can get accessed online, okay, which could give enough information on how to use, use the new system. That way no one from the project team actually has to have to go out and train, okay. All the information is conveyed in digital resources and if the uh, team within the organization is savvy enough, they can just access those resources in order to learn the new system, okay. But obviously, it depends on the skill level of the user and participants who this system is being developed with. And the final thing we're going to look at as a part of the implementation plan is the operations manual. Okay, this contains information related to the functionality of the system. It's the manual for the system. It tells you how it works. Okay, it can be used for the purpose of training, but it's also for the ongoing support of the users and participants as a reference guide. Once the system is implemented and it's been uh, gone to the final stages and we've tested, evaluated it, okay, the project team's going to then leave, okay, and then the organization, you know, they left with the system. They are going to be using that now moving forward without the project team there. But the operations manual needs to provide that ongoing support. So if there are any issues, hopefully that the users and participants can access the operations manual first instead of having to try to contact the project team once again after the job's been finished, okay? So it has to be written very well. But looking at the operations manual, let's just see what kinds of things it might cover. So essentially, it's how to use this new system. So we'll go over things such as hardware components, what is actually built up of the, the new system. It will have diagrams that might show where specific buttons are, and it might have numbers next to these buttons. And then you go to a certain page in the operations manual, and it tells you what those buttons actually do. Okay, it will have procedures for doing certain operations. Okay, going step by step on how to complete operations within the new system. It will have a, probably a troubleshooting section that if there are some issues with the system or a user or participant gets a bit lost, these are the strategies you can use to try and solve that problem. And it might also have a frequently asked section. Okay, and this would be if it was a system that might be used in a, a variety of different sections of an organization or a larger system. Okay, the questions people quite commonly ask, and this would be the, the standard responses to those questions. So I hope this video has given you a good understanding of the implementation stage of system development. And really these three main sections here, the conversion method for the, converting the old system into the new system into an organization, methods for training the participants and users within the organization how to use the new system, and the importance of developing an operations manual for not just training the participants and users, but also for providing that ongoing support after the project team has left the project.